الحمدللہ Alhamdulillah, in my heart perhaps, right, inshallah, just like all of you. Two years ago, we received a call on the Gain Pieces hotline. We have a Dawa hotline since 1993. And this Dawa hotline, anyone from anywhere, they can give us a call, any non-Muslim. So I received a call, it was 10 p.m. at night. You know, usually at that time, people don't call as much, but a person called. It was a non-Muslim sister, a non-Muslim lady. I picked up the call. She had a few questions. Then, I, then she said, you know, I'm interested to read the Quran. Can you guys send me a free copy of the Quran? So I said, yes, we can send it to you. It will reach it to you perhaps in three to five business days. Let me have your name. And then she mentioned her name. Then obviously for us to send a free copy or free package about Islam, we need to have address. Then I asked her, you know, my dear sister, let me get your address. I had my pad ready and my pen ready. I was about to write down the address. When I asked her the address, uh, uh, there was a big silence. There was a big silence. And I was thinking, what, maybe the phone got cut off, you know, maybe the line is not as good, what's going on? And, and then I heard uh, her sobbing. She was sobbing. Then I said to myself, you know, I'm sorry, did I say anything wrong? You know, I mean, I'm really sorry if I did something wrong, if I said something wrong to you. Then she said, I'm homeless. I don't have a home. I'm living in the garage of my friend. Then I was thinking to myself, it was the month of Ramadan, by the way. We just had, you know, me, my family, our, you know, our khandan, we just had a nice, delicious iftar meal that we all take for granted. When I was looking at, you know, no address, she's homeless, but then, alhamdulillah, she said, can I give you the address of my friend? I'm living with her in the garage. Uh, so then I got the address, but then she said that, you know, this is the month of Ramadan. I don't want to delay doing good things. Is it possible, Sabil, can I become a Muslim tonight? <laughs> right? I said, Allahu Akbar, yes, this is the best day, this is the best night. And Alhamdulillah, that sister, she recited, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Right? Allahu Akbar. When she recited the Shahada, I was thinking to myself, yes, she doesn't have a home, she doesn't have a wardrobe, you know, a closet full of clothes, you know, all the, all the, you know, for, all the, what do you call it, the homes, the garage, the cars, the gadgets. But then I was thinking to myself, she's richer than me, she's richer than Bill Gates, she's richer than Elon Musk, she's richer than the, the richest person in the whole world. She has something that they don't have. She has now Iman, she has now a blessings. Now she's a Muslim. And inshallah, now she has a GPS system to go to paradise with Allah's mercy. So this is so important. When I was assigned this topic, I was thinking about her first and foremost. Secondly, I was thinking of myself. When I go to my closet, when I go to my, you know, place where I hang all my, you know, my suits and my uh, jackets and whatnot, I was thinking, do I really need all of these things? Then obviously, when you examine yourself, when I examine myself, we don't need all of these important, uh, you know, wardrobes and all of the shoes and whatnot that we all take for granted. There was a giant billboard, as the brother said, we had many billboards in Chicago. As I was driving down uh, Highway 294, but there were anyone from Chicago besides myself here. Just give a big round of applause here from Chicago. 
Nobody? Okay, mashallah, somebody from my hometown, right? Alhamdulillah. I was driving on Chicago, there was a big giant billboard, and the giant billboard, it said, America weighs 35% of our food. Not 3%, right? Not even 30%, 35% of our food. So this is, this is tragic. So it's not just a problem within the Muslim community, it's just a problem, it's a, it's a human problem. So when you just Google how much, how much food that we waste, right? 300 billion meals every single year just in the US. I'm not speaking about Europe and Germany and South America, India, Pakistan, and all the Middle Eastern countries. Just in the USA, that much food that we waste. But then I was thinking, right? Just, just, in the, just, for, just for the Muslims, how much we waste. You know, this is a shadi season. This is a season many of us, we are invited to many, many weddings. It has become a tradition, right? It has become a tradition that before the nikah, many days before the nikah, there are so many, so many rituals that we do, right? The mehendi and all of that rituals and so much food is in there. During the shadi, during, during the marriage ceremony itself, after the marriage ceremony, you can just compile, you know, three, four, five, six, seven days. And even in those marriage celebrations, when there, is a, when there is a long food line, when people, when you look at the plates, right? I mean, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm also part of the problem, by the way, right? When you look at the plates, plates are all filled up. You know, I'm just imagining, they are so heavy, how can somebody carry that? They are so heavy, but after the food is done, almost plates are not empty, they're not wiped clean. You cannot see the shiny plates. About half the plate is empty, then the, then the, then the waiters and the you know, people who clean up the plates, they just take it and they, the food get dumped. So this is our problem, right? This is a problem with the Muslim ummah. We are the ones Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assigned to be the best of ummah that he created for humanity. In surah, surah number three, ayah number 110, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing to all of us, he's saying, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم كنتم خير أمة أخرجت للناس تأمرون بالمعروف وتنحون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله and the ayah continues so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that you are the best of ummah created for humanity because you enjoin good, you forbid evil and you believe in Allah so doing justice, enjoining good, forbidding evil is also a really important social justice uh, you know, obligation that Allah has given to us. So I would say that wastage and having so much excess entities that we have in our homes is also a social justice problem. It's also a social justice problem. You know, when, I, when we look at people who may, not, who may not have enough clothes to bear, people who are hungry, people who are thirsty, they are going through their own challenges. But I would say it's a, it's a test and trial also that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us, especially in this country, it's a test and trial also through excess food, extra clothes or extra gadgets that we have. Just like they are having a test, I believe that we are having a test also. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He wants to test us. That with all of these necessities that He has given all around us, these excess, this excess necessities, excess food, cheap food, lot of variety of food, right? Many styles, many dishes. This is also a, this is also, also a test that, that, that He has given to us. But besides the test, I would say, this is also a punishment that Allah has given to those countries in which there is excess food, excess clothes, and, and extra gadgets. Why do I say it, right? Coming from a health background, those who are from the health background, you can, you can relate with me. Yes, people who are malnourished, undernourished, right, thirsty and hungry, people who are dying, they don't have enough to eat. It's a challenge for them, but it's also a challenge and maybe a punishment for some of us. And here is the reason for it. When we consume in excess the food, for example, look at all the health problems that may cause. You know, one third of the world, they are overweight or, or they're obese. 
the, the most obese people in the whole world, by the way, it's not any European country. It's not any Latin American country, right? It's not, it's, it's not, even, it's not even this country. Can anyone guess without Googling, which one is the most obese country in the whole world? Just raise your hand, just shout out maybe, inshallah. A hint is, it's a Muslim country. Yeah, the country of Qatar, it's a Muslim country, it's a Muslim majority country. Of all the people, all the countries, right, of, of people of any faith, it is the Muslim country who is the most obese country in the world. So look at the health problems that may just come by just because of that test that Allah has given to us. All the cholesterol problems, right, which results into heart attacks, that, that, that also results into strokes kidney problem, liver problem, right, intestine problem, you know, cancer problems, all of these calamities are there, unfortunately, may Allah protect all of us, it is because we are consuming more than our body needs. So this also is a test and trial for all of us. So what is the solution, right? You know, Islam is not just about presenting the problems, Islam has comprehensive solutions. You know, when I interact with the non-Muslims, I mentioned to them, Islam just doesn't say just to be good, just to be right, just love your neighbors. Islam is a comprehensive faith. Islam is a practical faith. Islam is a detailed faith. Islam gives us solutions. So the best solution would be, we have to have the frame of reference. The frame of reference cannot be our feelings, our body, our hunger, our culture, our race, our country, right? Our emotions, our shortcomings. The frame of reference is none other than the, than the Quran and the authentic Sunnah, the Seerah, the example of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So one Quranic ayah that comes to my mind is from uh, Surah 33, ayah number 21, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing to all of us and he's saying, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْبَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِّمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمُ الْآخِرَةِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ قَصِيرًا So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing to us, he's saying that in the person of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you have the best example to follow. For those who believe in Allah in the last day and remembers Allah much. So anything that we do, anything that we say, any interaction that we have, we should always be asking the question, what would Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, what would he do if he were in our shoes in this day and age in this country? What would he do? How would he interact? So I mean, obviously, you know, the important hadith that comes to my mind in which Umar bin Khattab, anhu, he started to cry when he visited Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So let's hear this important narration. This is an Imam, uh, Imam Muslim's collection. So what, did, so what, what made Umar ta'ala anhu, why did he cry? So this is him saying, right? This is Umar, he's saying, I entered the room of messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, while he was laying on his side over a mat. I sat down as he drew up his lower garment as he was not wearing anything else. The mat has left marks on his side. I looked at the Prophet's cupboard, and I saw, a I saw a handful of barley in a small amount. Then the, same, then the same of mimosa leaves in the corner, and the leather bag hanging on the side. That's it, right? My eyes started to tear up, and the Prophet said, what makes you weep, son of Khattab? And, the, and then he said, Umar. O oh, Prophet of Allah, peace be upon you. Why should I not cry that this mat has left marks on your side and I see little in this cupboard? Caesar and Khusro live amongst the fruits and the springs while you are the messenger of Allah and his chosen. And yet, this is your situation. And the Prophet said, and we know this excellent advice, right? This is what the Prophet advised uh, Umar bin Khattab. Uh, o oh, son of Khattab. Are you not pleased that they are for us in the hereafter and for them, this is this world, right? So he's saying that yes, people have enjoyment, the non-Muslims, our brothers and sisters of other faith, they have this world and he's saying that we have the hereafter, right? Alhamdulillah. So 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him does not want us to live, right? Like really poor. But we have to live in moderation. So who can name, if I ask you this question, right? I wish this was just a small gathering, mashallah, you know, hundreds of people here, perhaps thousand. Who comes to your mind, if I ask you the question, some of the richest companions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who comes to your mind? Usman radiallahu ta'ala who comes to your mind, right? How about Abdul Rahman bin Al-Auf comes to your mind, but you guys are forgetting somebody else. Who? Now when you're, when you're mentioning the name of the male companions, who was that female companion that comes to your mind? Who was one of the very first Muslims of all the Muslims, yes? There you go, right? Khatija radiallahu ta'ala anha. She was one of the richest ladies. She was the supporter. She did not have like mansions and mansions, right? What she did was when the three years of boycott by the non-Muslims of the Prophet and of the Muslims, she was the main supporter providing food and the nourishment and all the resources to the Muslims. Yes, she was a rich lady, mashallah, right? Our mother. So, you know, Yes, male companions come to our mind, but we should never forget the female scholars and the female supporters and the wives of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So Islam does not say that only have one piece of cloth, right? Nothing in the home, right? Just eat bread all day. No, Islam wants us to, yes, we can have, you know, affluent lifestyle, but it has to be in moderation. Allah does not say we cannot enjoy the blessings. Yes, the best blessing, the best reward, the best resources in the hereafter. But in this life also, Allah does want us to enjoy. But that enjoyment has to be within the framework of Islam and with moderation. So, you know, when, you, when it compares to Uthman Ta'ala Nu, what comes to our mind is during the Battle of Tabuk, just before the Battle of Tabuk, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he, was, he needed the resources for the army, right? For this wonderful defensive jihad. So when he requested the companions and the Muslims of that time, I need your support, who can support? Uthman radiallahu ta'ala knew 300 camels right away, the very first person raising the hand. So the blessings that Allah has given to us, obviously we should share the blessings for the betterment of humanity, right? For the relief efforts, social justice efforts, and definitely the dawah efforts. So in closing, what are some of the action items that we can take, that I can take, right? Starting with myself, by the way. You know, we are all, we are, we are all suffering with this excess food and excess clothing and whatnot. So first and foremost, what I would suggest to myself and all of you is, okay, let's start with the food, right? Let's start with the food. The advice people give is this, look into, look into the refrigerator, right? Look into your pantry, just make a list of what you need, the basics that, that what you need. Go to the grocery store, don't go through every single aisle, just go directly to those items, pick up the items and come back to your car or just walk home, right? Because if you go around all the aisles, it's tempting, it's tempting. You know, the ice cream there, the vanilla ice cream is there, the chocolate, the chips, right? Just come back with just a short grocery list. That's number one. Number two, the access items that we have in our food pantries and whatnot, there's so many food, uh, you know, banks all around in every single city. Just donate to them. When it comes to the clothing, mashallah, we have, you know, helping hands, we have ICNA Relief, we have so many wonderful relief organizations of ICNA and also outside of ICNA, mashallah, may Allah reward each single one of them. Keep on giving access clothing, right? Number, number three, I would say. Number four, this is myself, my family, and each single one of you. Let, let's limit ourselves going to the Eid bazaars. You know, there are so many Eid bazaars. You know, 10 bazaars before Eid, right? 10 bazaars after Eid and the, every single Eid coming. So let's limit ourselves with that. Last but not the least, last but not the least. This is what I have seen, what worked for me. When we, when we create a higher, bigger, greater mission in life, all of the necessities, we can tone them down. So take part, you know, become an ambassador of Islam. Take part, perhaps, you can say, 
that you know what? The youth are going astray from Islam. Let me focus on the youth, not just my family's youth, but all the youth. Let's start a program for the masjid and for the whole community. Consume yourself, right, with that perhaps. Somebody of you can say, you know what, let me become really active in Dawa, having the billboards and the Dawa booths and the masjid open houses, dedicate five hours a week, maybe write 10 hours a month or so. So once the focus shifts to something higher, bigger, greater, and that's what Islam wants from us, inshallah, all of these food and the wardrobes and the, you know, and all the Nike shoes and whatnot, these things we can tone it down, our activism will increase, we can be more productive, we can line with the Quran and the Sunnah, and inshallah, Allah will give us barakah. Allah, may Allah, may Allah give unity to the Muslim Ummah. May Allah remove the oppression from the Muslim Ummah. May Allah remove the oppression from the, from the whole humanity. And may Allah make us ambassadors of Islam and ambassadors of peace. Jazakallahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.